get the tons. those big numbers we have there dennis oh my god that is mind-numbing i know i know i can't wait now hello <laughs> open the window i'll help <laughs> those windows shut uh, hello all right well, we'll we'll put it on we'll put it on tomorrow on regular after i do some judicious editing and hope that they don't cancel it on me um so greetings everyone who's not there i'm hoping i did it right i don't even know Let i have no idea do you want me to go on the youtubes and look no it won't be on the youtubes because it's unlisted so uh, no i'm not a part of that okay yes, yes. I, uh, that's the way it you works. actually how do you actually know it's out there then uh i'm looking at it on patreon Let me oh there i am okay okay it's on there so let me leave. Let me come back to you. Yeah, nobody's nobody's paying attention to us. So well, it's one o'clock on a on a, on a Tuesday when know. nobody's listening to his show and nobody's listening to us. So there you go. We got yeah. Both. It's this is a win win. Cackles can do word salad all day long, and uh, no one care. It's great. Uh, so let's go really quickly to serious. The um, hold on one second. Let me just go to this funny. Howard Stern losing his grip on serious job. Shock jock reeling after rival call her daddy show scoops him with Kamala Harris interview. Wow. I heard that that interview was an absolute disaster, but perfect. You know what though? I, apparently he's taking like some sort of shit fit that it's he didn't uh, get it first. That he didn't get it first. But I think that call her daddy is in a different state, right? I mean, everything has to be according yes. to when um when they can when make the whole make all the moving parts happen because exactly. yeah and this was like last week they taped this so do we think he's live with her today mm -hmm. or what do we think's going pre -recorded. on it's pre recorded but wasn't she on the view live today and isn't she doing colbert live today i don't know i read online it was it was pre recorded um okay let's check it out then so let's yes see. let's see because if they mention that florida is about to get destroyed then it's live and uh, shame, shame on her. So, uh, oh wait, maybe you should go take care of people in North Carolina too. Oh wait. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go and join in <laughs> with all of our Patreon listeners because and all his listeners, we no. there must be five. Oh, so so. All right. So we're just listening to music. If uh, then I I I'm an idiot, and I set the show for October uh, 9th at. 12 45 p.m. as opposed to today so i just fixed it on the patreon and hopefully hopefully yeah. you guys but no one's missed anything except a lot of music <laughs> because <laughs> howard's incompetent and <laughs> oh i can't i can't two more songs baby come on <sighs> get the lighter out <laughs> right. should be up now Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, you guys. This is. I don't either. Well, no, it should work now. It's. Uh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Uh, okay, here for a few minutes working. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, hold on. Let's let's get more music from Howard. Okay. Hi, Melody. Hey, now. So this is all you missed so far. You missed absolutely nothing. They're just uh, music playing. I guess she's on a really tight schedule, and we'll see what happens. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, the third song. And by the way, it's all been African American uh, singers. It's just weird. Yes, they're all black. They did change, change, changes. Now they. Did. Wait, wait, is Prince really black though? Hey, 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 hey. 
Mm-hmm. For October 9th at 1245, like a moron. And I just noticed in the Patreon that I didn't set it for today. And I'm an absolute asshole. So multitude of apologies. It's just, uh, it's yeah. Okay. No one's missed anything yet. You've missed nothing. There's You've- nothing going on on this show, just like usual. Yeah. So, so just- I guarantee there'll be some laughing. Uh, you know what? Probably not. Let's see. I don't know. Uh- <laughs> All right, I need you to hold your tongue during this interview because I promised that this uh, that this stream would not get political. Did, did That's you- not political. I can make fun of a person and not be political. Son of a bitch, Melody. You son of a bitch. Did I TiVo it? No, I did not TiVo <laughs> it. You be quiet. You, you know, I, don't, I can't believe I even invited you to come on to the shit show. Oh, Maybe. my God. I was in the middle. It was only in the middle of preparing for a hurricane. No big deal. Oh, okay. Well, you know. <laughs> At least your house will still be standing tomorrow. That's okay? true. I, that. I may be sitting in the dark, but I, it will be still here. Serious XL. Howard Stern. Okay. Playing the bat dance for Madam Vice President. Wow. No, he's not. He is not playing well, we'll listen to this dance. for a second. First of all, it's for me. He Howard. is. You're on a special day. I was supposed to have a day off. I'd That's only trolling. I'd only Vice President of the United States. <laughs> because right now is my nap time. So this is another show. Try not to fall asleep during this interview. Do you nap at all? Not really. I wish I could. I, I don't can't. mind. You know, Which like, effect is this now? Life. You know, sometimes on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I know. Look what you. By the way, I'm playing Bat Dance because I knew you were a Prince fan. Yes. But I believe I'm a huge Prince fan. But I believe that the Batman soundtrack was his best work. It really? was genius. Yes. Me? Think about it. Listen to go, this. Go, go with a smile. Did it, you didn't. didn't oh do my it. God! This is. Oh no, my God! This writes enough. itself. I mean, obviously. <laughs> I don't have to say anything, Monique. Spectacular. You no can words. go back to his early days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like him on the guitar, there was just nothing I like it. And so many oh people. Have, I mean, even you look at Bruno Mars today, right? Right. Who, who just been? I have no words. I have no words. Holy shit! The this is embarrassing. Worst song ever. I <laughs> Prince. You know, the night he passed, Doug and I were in LA, and actually just. Like he and I have very different musical tastes. My husband and I. Yeah, what's Doug into? Like cream like or? Depeche <laughs> Mode. Just, oh my yeah, god, that's him. Doug is I grew up Depeche kind Mode. of hip hop, and but Prince is the one intersection where we both love, and we just hit, played Prince all night long. We danced, we sang his songs. It was that was our little tribute. Did you ever meet Prince in I real life? Never met him. Yeah. Wow. I went to see him. <laughs> This is such a weird story. I, I forget me. Forget my. Tell things, me though. I want to well, hear it. It's very strange because I was a huge Prince fan like yeah. you. No, you weren't. You called me. Would worked on a book with him of pictures. Do I just count the lies? Can we just do that? about 150 <laughs> people come over and, and I said, I'm going. Yeah. Go over. He comes out, and he um, announces to the crowd, "Turn off all the lights," and he's playing in the dark. Right. The entire time I left, I said, this is ridiculous. I could listen to this on the radio. Mm. He wouldn't, he didn't want to be seen. And he wanted you to feel it with your ears and your spirit instead of your eyes. Right? But, but ridiculous. I'm the day, I, I'm finally going to see Prince. You know, what time of night was it? You know, he was famously a night owl. It was early. It was, it was early. Yeah. It was an early session. It was like uh-huh. a special promotional thing. Uh-huh. You know, it makes me think of you because you've oh my said, God, this is sleep inducing. Sort of running for office, even when you ran, you know, as a, a DA or yeah. attorney general, it was like, um, you said, I don't like talking about myself. Yeah. It, it feels I was raised not to be a narcissist. And here you're, like you know, you. the other guy is so spoken only- like a true narcissist. <laughs> but it's weird. It's, it's only a narcissist. You talk about that. your accomplishments and sort of congratulate yourself. I just have always, again, you're right. I was raised this way. It's not about you. It's about what you do. Right. right? And oh, the affect um, changed. So it is. It feels immodest to me to talk about myself, which is. <laughs> Apparently I'm doing right now. <laughs> right. You have to, right? Yeah, I mean, this is do. it. You're running you for do. office. And a friend of mine actually said, look, this is not a time to worry about modesty because this is, you know, obviously you got to let people know who you are. When you said you don't nap, I get it because like what you've taken on is extraordinarily difficult. 
And I, I mean, do you feel the pressure of the moment in the sense that like I, when I met you out in the hall, I said, I'm really nervous because I want this to go well for you. I want it to go well for the country. Even when I watch them on Saturday night live with the, um, (laughs) where they have Maya Rudolph playing you, Mm -hmm. I hate it. I don't want you being made fun of. Mm -hmm. I, 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 there's too much at stake. I believe the entire future of this country right now. I mean, as America land of the free home of the brave, I think it's literally on the line. I agree with you. And, and when I see them, how did you react to the Saturday slight, Night Live bit? I, well, I, I just saw it actually. And it was funny. I, I am a huge yeah. fan of Andrew Rudolph. So I think she put a lot of time into the, to doing the, the, the piece and, and, and the character. Um, but to your point, I literally lose sleep. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And have been over what is oh, it? For him, yeah. This, he comes and I mean, honestly, the I, for this. I this was on I end the day like pretty much video. every day these days. He's Asking wearing that same suit that he wore at daughter's, daughter's, daughter's wedding. Yeah. yeah. No, but he um, saw, and what can you do? I mean, so he saw the, you're you going out. Daddy girl you're, ta- you're coming here. You're going. You went on The View this morning. You're going to the show. That didn't go so well. So maybe this time he wore a suit, though. so amazing about 60 Minutes is the fact that Trump turned it down. Yeah, I mean, it just says so much. He didn't want to be fact checked. This is maddening. This is insanity. What do you mean you don't want to be fact checked? I think that, you know, Howard. People ask me, um, like, what do you think is going on, and what what is the tension here? What's at stake? And there are many things, and I can be much more articulate than than what I'm. Please, please be more articulate, please, dear God. I believe that this is a an election. That is about strength versus weakness. Yeah. And weakness as projected by someone who puts himself in front of the American people and does not have the strength to stand in defense of their needs, their dreams, their desires, um, the work that must happen to make sure that we are a secure nation, that we are nurturing and protecting our alliances around the world, that we are supporting America's military, that we are fighting to bring the cost I'm of living down for working families, that we say. are building businesses, building growth. Did you ever think in your lifetime Jesus. you would see a Republican not supporting NATO and wanting to disassemble NATO? I mean, what, what world are we living in? And this NATO, is all weird. NATO, which is the greatest military. Melody, I don't know what up talking means. What does that mean? Alliance, the world. It's basically to try known. to. It's what my father, word salad. It sounds smart. Yeah. That is to strength. To, to to embrace that alliance as America, as Americans. Not and really saying anything, but using words to make it say like you're saying something. Because the other one of them is saying anything. It's actually what very boring. Thing that just came out today that Bob Woodward's uh, book was uh, saying that Trump was sending COVID tests to Putin, and Putin said, "Don't let anyone know." COVID's and, not. Right. I mean, this is. What is going on? What do you make of that? So we're on this hill again. In the debate, I believe the book just came out that Donald Trump has this desire to be a dictator. He (laughs) admires up talking. So when you're talking, you end everything with kind of like a question, right? Is that basically talking into a circle, ending with a question? With a question, strong men. And he gets played by them because he thinks that they're his friends. He wants he wants a yeah. quote. And so bad. they he are manipulating so him bad. full time and manipulating him by flattery. Yeah. And with favor. And so in the midst, to your point, as reported by Bob Woodward, in the height of the pandemic, and remember, and your listeners will remember, people were dying by the hundreds. Yeah. The hundreds. Oh my God. <laughs> to get these kits, the tests, the, the, the COVID test kits. You couldn't get them. Couldn't get them. Right. Couldn't get them anywhere. Right. And this guy who is president of the United States is sending them to Russia to a murderous dictator for his personal use. Who you only wish Putin would have gotten COVID and dropped dead. Well, the I point, wish that. Well, the point being, that is just the most recent stark example of who Donald Trump is, that he secretly sent COVID test kits for the personal use of Putin, of Russia, an adversary to the United States, when he was talking about Americans should be putting bleach in their blood 
Think about what this is. Think about this this person who wants to be president again, who secretly is helping out an adversary when the American people are dying by the... Oh my home. God, you're saying that as people are dying in North Carolina? Damn! Said, how did he handle it? Domestic God damn, people. lady! To be fair, what is she supposed to be doing about the fucking people in North Carolina? Yeah, the people, well, how about getting military aid to them? How about having Army Corps engineers go there and make water in Asheville? Do yeah. something. Not seven hundred fifty dollars. This is Ima, maddening. Ima this is Jeff fucking maddening. That's fact. They're not doing Ima anything. Jeff said they're not out of money. They are doing everything. everything. No, they're not. They're not doing shit. I don't know that. I've I don't seen know enough. That. They're not doing shit, and I'm know. scared for Florida when they don't do shit here. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, everybody turned down the FEMA aid, right? Like, you know, every single. Uh, but, you know, her word salad. First of all, I want to know why anyone would want. All I hear is TDS. All I hear is Trump this, Trump that. What? What's so good about you? That's all I want to hear. I haven't heard anything saying that anything okay. good, a plan okay. Okay. that you're not doing now. Lower the lower the blood pressure. I, America see mismanaged the whole thing. This is what keeps me up at night. I don't understand how my fellow Americans. Oh my God. I don't even understand how this election is close. And and and. Uh, Yes, I'm voting for you, but I would also vote for that wall over there <laughs> rather than a guy who says, I, you know, where do I begin? A guy who says he doesn't support Ukraine wouldn't get on that stage with you and say, I saw Ukraine. This is, and why do my fellow Americans? I love when somebody who has absolutely no political prowess asks questions. It's really quite delicious. It's kind of chaos. Why? To your point. You think John Hine wrote them? Yes, doesn't sir. support absolutely. James John Hine wrote Ukraine. these. Doesn't support, therefore, something America should always and has always, by the way, been a champion of, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. Which means the importance of standing against anyone who tries to take another nation by force. Right. That's what we stand for as Americans. That you don't do that, and if you do that to our friends, we're going to stand with our friends. It's a you're getting played, and some would say, "Look, I grew up in the neighborhood." Some would say you're getting punked. Yeah. If you stand in favor Correct. of somebody who's an adversary over your friends on principles that we all agree on, and you look at it, it's it's not only that he says he's going to be a dictator on day one. Let's, Understand let's, what dictators yeah, yeah. do? They jail journalists. They, they put people who are protesting in the street in jail. He, sa he said he thinks he wants to go after Jimmy Kimmel, a comedian. He wants to go after Stephen Colbert and Seth Meyers. What, you know, even if someone had said uh, years ago when, when I remember presidential you know, races, if someone said, oh, Kamala Harris isn't um, a black woman, they would have been out of the, they would have been out of the, yeah. that would have been it, would have been over. I mean, what, who, who, how, how do you challenge that? Well, how do you, what do you do with that? But back to the point about what it actually is, and then let's talk about it and call it what it is. It's a sign of weakness in a leader. Do yeah. not stand in defense of your people, the American people. It's a sign of weakness in the commander in chief of the United States of America. To not stand on the side supporting your military. Don't forget Donald Trump calling members of our military. Prisoners of war, suckers and losers. John McCain, he doesn't Absolutely. like him because he, he got captured. He says he doesn't like him because I don't like people who got caught. A prisoner of war, an American hero. Yeah. Think about this guy who, by the way, his former chief of staff, two secretaries of defense, his national security advisor, people who served with Donald Trump in the White House, have said he is unfit to be commander in chief and is dangerous. So. The people who know him best have let us know. They've seen him. They've worked with him in the Oval Office, and they know he is dangerous and unfit to be yeah. president of the United States. I mean, States. his own brain cells just him. absolutely leaving my head right now. That, that's exactly I mean, right. What, what, I mean, how could anyone justify any of this? I don't get it. It's madness. And I know Donald Trump so many years. He was at my wedding. Mm -hmm. I, I always had a good time with him, but not as president of the United States. You, you can't you can't come out with these wacky eating cats and dogs. And now these poor people who are 
are living in these communities are getting threatened. You know, how you can't it? dine with Nazis. You can't do it. The, the, the thing about the cats and dogs. And again... Oh, did you... It, when you were doing the, the debate, yeah. he makes... What was going through your mind when he said the cats and dogs? Did you say to yourself, I just, I just, I just won this thing. This guy's self-destructing. Wait, did you say it to yourself or did you not know in the moment? There were a couple of moments, at least in the debate, where it was surreal. <laughs> Honestly. Right. Oh we're in a debate before it turned out, I think, 60 million Americans who are tuning in, meaning they're not dealing with all of their other priorities because they want to hear a debate about who will be the next president of the United States. And I've they want to know so where do they stand? Oh, I am so zoned out on this. How this is, need and how the two of them are so just right. absolutely vapid. And it is one it is of those painful. People, Donald Trump on that I mean, politicians in general are not now really not interesting right. people. They, they really One of those people on us. stage spent. No, no they, they really don't. And, and, and you know, they, no, no. about himself. Some are better at others to make you kind of get entertained. And I but actually, there were moments when I was better, that's on that debate stage where I was, it, you know, I knew what I'd he is. I'd rather listen to Henry Kissinger talk family. about going into Cambodia. Really this was asleep. a that's very life. serious that's, moment. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. The votes <laughs> of the American people. Oh, no. He was talking about. Like Riley and, with no and pigment. Quite <laughs> exactly. But also not talking about a little more dribble for dealing with bringing <laughs> down the dribble. cost of groceries. <laughs> not talking about a plan for building up American businesses. Not talking about a plan for strengthening America's security and standing with our allies and against our adversaries. When I was watching the debate, what drove me nuts, and I was there debating with you, I was like, just saying, say that, say that. And you said it. You said, well, this guy is what talking. What the hell type of interview is this? No, I'm okay, confused. Immigration problem. I, I mean. And you made the point. You it, said. It, you talking know, to a political great. candidate about it's something that happened a few weeks ago. Um, Bill. That would have mid at best. Voters. And you're still Republican standing on it. Democrats did it together. Okay, that's great. But you picked okay. up the phone and called it's supposed Republican to be like upbeat. Reject your own bill. Tell me all the good things you're going to do and, and, and roll with it, baby. I mean. Isn't the that really? What you, I mean, wouldn't that campaign. be like the goal of this? And like, we could have solved you know? this big problem. We would have had the resources, yeah. the money, everything. Yeah. And yet, he's cut, somehow during the debate, it somehow just goes away. That, that I mean, Melody to me, it should be like we don't move Patreon on until we answer that. I would. <laughs> Why did you cancel the bill? How much cheaper do you want? How, how much cheaper do you want it? <laughs> Shall I give it? Is to you? I send you a sticker. You put it on your car. You might. You might be listening. I would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border. I've been down to the border. Those border agents are working around the you clock. You border czar for four right. years. I hate to say that. Still what is that? In fact, the border... Ah, everything's so falling apart. Oh, no. Oh, no. I fell asleep. I'm traveling our country. Mothers and fathers and children of people who have died because of fentanyl. This would have put the resources into stemming the flow of fentanyl coming into our do country, killing right? Americans. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. Allow us to go after transnational of, criminal uh, organizations. I am, like am a former prosecutor. You know, I have prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for trafficking in guns, drugs, and human beings. This is not theoretical for me. I know what they do, do and we should have the resources to go after them. Don't you want to say to his, the, the people who support him, well, what are you not hearing? Are you not hearing that we had a bill to solve this big problem? You're all afraid of this. Understood. We understand that. I, I mean, I, I, I hear these interviews with people who are voting in the other direction. And I don't understand. There's no... There's no, there's no it's I fell asleep into my green screen. <laughs> Speaking about being a so rambling being a prosecutor, I, I'm what curious about that phase of your life. Yeah. So you go to law school mm -hmm. and really it, it's sort of against all odds, but but um Kamala Harris, this is your wiki. You law school, <laughs> and you get a job <laughs> as a you know, a, a prosecutor. Yeah, in prosecutor, Alameda yes. County, the seat is Oakland, California. And 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 what is it? What prepares you to go? In other words, at first, I assume you go in front of a jury, yeah, and they give you some kind of easy case. I'm hoping, like maybe How start is this with a DUIs. DUIs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Were you a wreck the first? Oh, I see what's going on here. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to 
you know the way like every new show everything you know with these undecided voters which i can't imagine there's any at this point but they keep saying well we don't know enough about her we don't know if enough about her and i think i think that this is supposed to um in a colloquial colloquial type of way make her seem more human is that what's supposed to be going on uh i don't hear you i don't hear you i don't hear you i don't hear you. damn but, thing i tell you hit the button yeah. i guess but you know it's not really doing anything except showing that she can be really boring like him so you go <laughs> into a real jury in front I of a real jury. has more energy right now even though it's a dui what what is that moment that, like for you? That was a low blow. So I sorry. <laughs> started by actually the first case I actually prosecuted was when I was a, law, a certified law clerk. So what? I and I won the case. But the great thing about you know just pushing people. Wait, 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 young, wait. They yeah. don't know How do you win a case as a certified law clerk? I, oh, because that, sometimes they send law clerks to do if it's like oh, because it's, it's like one of those things where it's just kind of like okay, so it's procedural. Push it into court for you instead, so that you know. oh, okay, like a procedural thing where it's just like okay, yeah, we're gonna have a thing. Yeah, All right, okay. they're plea gu they're pleading guilty. I don't want to be bothered. Exactly, you go, you take this. You you go. I, I, and I was over prepared, but I believed in my case. And, you know, the great thing about being a prosecutor, and I've talked with many prosecutors over the years. You get to prosecute people. Is you only got one job, which is to do the right thing. Right. And so you have to believe in your case. And frankly, if you don't believe in your case, you shouldn't be bringing your case, right? You shouldn't be charging a case unless you believe this person is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and, and you have the evidence to prove it. You shouldn't be making decisions based on emotion. You should be making decisions based on facts and the law. Right. So I believed in my case, but but that work actually i had a a mentor um dick eichelhart who actually hired me as a a prosecutor right out of law school and huh. i was just telling with somebody so the interview you want to know what the interview was like yeah so i go into this courthouse it's the storied courthouse in oakland california and i go up to the ninth floor and i go into this office and there are a bunch of wooden chairs and there are these guys who are behind the desk and in these chairs around one's got his leg up his foot up on one on the seat of the chair leaning over all oh these guys are sitting in this little wooden chair is charlie xx yeah. available it's my big interview you know what the interview was the questions were from you remember that game scruples yeah <laughs> that was the question he doesn't that was my interview scruples. He has so no idea what scruples are. Like, well, if you were I mean in game and in life. A, a a poor student and in an apartment, and then your neighbor says, Hey, I got a I got a hookup on cable. <laughs> 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 and you you know, would you do it if you don't have to pay for questions like that? But that's um that's how I started my career as a as a prosecutor. But but the, but the career believing in the work, obviously. But the career really started. Uh, your mom, single uh, mom, you know, working hard. We 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 yeah. read a lot about your mother. Yeah, bright woman, scientist, chemist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Father was also a uh, an academic. Yeah. Uh, you know, bright people. Yeah, but uh, your mother moves you to Montreal. I think it was yes. in Canada when I was in high school, well, just before high school. Yeah. So when you're there, one of your friends was uh, sexually molested. Yeah. By a relative. Her stepfather. Stepfather. Yeah. And it was then you knew you wanted to go to law school because oh you wanted to be the person that people turned to when they were in dire straits. My mother has called me 17 times today. You know, I, I, I now predicted to get almost 16 inches of rain. I don't want to hear it. I always knew I wanted to go to law school. I mean, part of some of my heroes were people like Thurgood Marshall. So I'm just trying to find Marshall. something interesting to talk about. The power of the law. The passion from the street. You can't talk about the hurricane. You know, you know how much it's stressing me out, Dennis. It ain't doing me any okay. favors. Dennis, you will have a home to. Will I? There could be a tornado. I could lose my home. You could, but uh, odds are in your favor, I think. I, I, mean, I, have, I, have, a bet, not, I have a better bet. Better than I'm, you two. I'm not, uh, um, uh, you know, putting down what you have to go through at all. Okay. I know that I, I feel your pain. Believe me. I'm freaking the fuck out right now. I, I mean, I and I fully understand it. It's terrible, but yeah, but it's only. Well, what, are, yeah, what are the odds? I know it's what only are the odds. Only stuff. It's only stuff. When I decided I wanted to be a prosecutor, a big part of it had to do with 
Wanda's experience. And I just felt like there has to be, and I want to be part of a system that is protecting vulnerable people. Yeah. And, and it's I public service. Yeah, it is. And it's, it, I don't know. I've always, maybe I'm, you know, I'm the eldest of two kids, you know, I, when I was two years, starting from when I was two years old, my mother would say, look after your sister. You know, I've, I've, it's an instinct of mine to want to protect people. But I think that's what people need to know. Uh, certainly to me, you know, public service is such a great thing. But when you graduate law school and, you know, you have to pay have a you, lot of money. Have you looked on the uh, Amazon, their prime day yet? To make a big corporate no, job. No, I need to get it. wasn't for me. Not yeah. really. They've really screwed up. It's hard to search for stuff that's now. It's terrible. I really I like about terrible. you. And, and, you know, when you first. Yeah, they used to have, a, like, upcoming you things. You could see them come in and mark them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know. I did get a sort of mud, mud flaps yeah, yesterday because it was, it was or it early. So you start to take on gangs. Yes. You've written that you had to face uh, a guy who scalped his girlfriend. Yeah. Scalped his girlfriend. Yeah. Gang guys. Yeah. Did you fear for your life? Did you ever, did your mother even say to you, what are you doing? You went to law school. What, 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 what are you it's doing? It's a scary You're profession, doing too much. right? It's no nonsense. You need to rest. You need you rest. What's involved. And yeah, there, is, there, there are threats and all of that. But the good that you can do standing in front of a jury and saying to that jury that this mother's child should not have been killed. Yeah. To say that this has all the energy of an opium trafficking <laughs> should pay <laughs> a consequence. To say that um <laughs> you know that that people should receive <laughs> dignity and and that there has to be serious consequence for serious crime. Um I I just I think that's some of the most important work that anyone can do, which is to require that we have a society. Even my watch is telling me it's time to get up and walk around. <laughs> Mel, Mel, does not allow in particular. Mel, Mel Tillis is going, hey, can you speed it up a little? And kind of behavior to go without consequence, <laughs> serious consequence. Really weird, too, because to me, you're the law and order candidate. And yet they yeah. try to paint you like you're some leftist who, who, who i don't know who wants to have people running through the streets committing crimes you were a prosecutor i have <laughs> you know, I, I have personally prosecuted everything from you know um um come on assault to homicides and then as attorney general transnational criminal organizations which i took on as a leader but, but talk you know the the story that got me was this six-year-old girl when you were a prosecutor, yeah. it was a six-year-old girl who you felt would not be able to recount to the mm -hmm. jury the abuse that was going on in her home. Yeah. And you had to walk away. You had to say to yourself, oh, God, I can't put this kid through it. She won't win the case. And knowing she's going to go home to this father or whatever it was, That's stepfather, right, yeah. who was abusing her. That kind of work, you take it home. I mean, it has to eat mm -hmm. at your soul. It does. Because you probably went home that night and said, that little girl's in the house with her abuser. It was one of the most difficult cases I've ever handled. It, I, to this day, remember exactly when I realized that that was what was going to happen. I, to this day, I remember where I was. I remember exactly how I felt. And I still, I, I still think about that and her. Um, you know, I, as a prosecutor, I spent... I would go up to the the parents of homicide victims would have a meeting every Thursday evening. And no DA had gone up there. And I would go I up didn't even give her water, and join them you. for their meetings. No, nah, that wow. sounds like she sounds like she's her throat is dry. dry. Figure out what Twitter we needed to do more to figure out who the killer of their child was and to be able to then bring those cases to justice. It's um. You still hear it? I think it's very. Yeah, I still hear it. We unfortunately, I mean, I, I'm I'm getting sleepy. As a society, there has to be a serious consequence, but the one person killing another human being, a, yeah. a woman being raped, a child being molested. Oh my God! A serious consequence, and that's it's, the worst. It's live on the Twitter, time. not on Sirius XM. Right oh, it's pre-recorded, definitely. And it, I think you that people should, should be able to live in a society. Where yeah. they feel With safe. I classes, think of safety as a her, civil right. I can barely hear you. You need to talk a little bit. have the right to be safe because think about a society. Look at the so, chair. 
putting her in. I just want you to see this. Is yeah, the, let's see this chair. This is the thing that they had on there. Wait, ready? Look. Oh my oh. god, that is embarrassing. Isn't that embarrassing? Uh, that is uh, that is embarrassing. Embarrassing. You know what? She she should just fire all her people. Absolutely. I mean, seriously. Look at him. Could you imagine Hillary Clinton oh, sitting in that chair? Back. We're gonna come back to the the <laughs> video things that they uh, that they. I mean, show. but could you imagine Hillary Clinton sitting in a chair like that? She freaking she'd castrate somebody. How is <laughs> what they do to her? How do you put her in that chair? <laughs> <laughs> Where then I'm no fan of hers, but I know she's got a set on her, and you would not put her in a chair like that. She would freaking hurt you. That's not going to be a productive society. <laughs> so when you went after gang members, I'm talking about the people who traffic, who traffic drugs yeah. and this and that kind of thing. Were you ever directly threatened by these people? They said, "Hey, you better just shut this down, or you're or you're going to get it." I've definitely had death threats. Yeah. Yeah, I don't generally talk about them, but right. yes. Why don't you talk about them? Because you don't want to be a good to time to talk about them. There, or is it because it just is too, it's just too hard to confront? You're protected by Secret Service. It's okay, honey. Yeah, you can say it. Of, of, of the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very brave. I, I just, I'm not going to, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Does it infuriate you too that, first of all, it's something drives me nuts with Obama's presidency. He had the opportunity to appoint someone to the Supreme Court. Mitch McConnell goes, F you, you're not appointing anyone to the Supreme Court, basically. You're the sitting president of the United States. The basic unfairness of that makes me insane. It makes oh me feel God, like Howard, you're just going down the You sound more like a person that doesn't understand anything about the way the government works. Point Please. The Supreme Court justice. And now we have a Supreme Court. Oh my God. You know what? You want you want to get an abortion. You don't want to get abortion. I trust any woman to make that decision for herself. What is this? I don't want Donald Trump and his party deciding. I don't want Clarence Thomas deciding. But here's the thing that is, again, really important that people understand about who Donald Trump is. Oh my God. We're he hand selected three members of the United States Supreme Court to do exactly what they did take away the right of an individual to make decisions about their own body. Like I ask people to take a step back. Let's, let's just think about it this way. Let's, whatever your gender. Right. And it's not about abortion. You just like the forced COVID shots. Okay. You have Bye. basically now a system that says you as an individual do not have the right to make a decision about your own body. The government has the right to make that decision for you. Sounds so like COVID how you feel about abortion, think about what that means. You know, the, the, the strength of America includes that we have been committed as Americans, as part of our spirit, to the expansion of rights. Right. And for the first time, we're seeing a restriction of rights, how fundamental rights, including what could be more fundamental it's got to be another maybe 15 minutes. There's no, gonna, there's no way they're going to, there's no way they're going to let it keep rambling happened. like now, this. Your point, look, this is not, this, this issue is not about trying to convert people, right? Right. Because you, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. Right. The government shouldn't be telling her what to do with her body. She will talk with I her priest, with her pastor, her rabbi, her imam. Yes, you shouldn't be forced to take a shot that you don't want. You shouldn't be forced to be forced You got a guy who other. says probably... You shouldn't be forced to do anything. It's America. America. You got a guy who says, hey, we're not stopping here. You know gay rights are next. Yeah. You know it. But you Clarence know it. Thomas said it. Yep. I mean, who doesn't have... You know, here's the, the, the crazy thing to me. Who doesn't have gay people in their life? Whether it's your kid, whether it's your best friend, whether it's... A, Definitely Howard. I mean, the genie is out of the bottle, guys. And to your point, think about it. You know, so I actually Come on, out, Howard. Come on. Had to perform some of the first same-sex marriages as an elected official in 2004. Right. Okay. A lot of people have evolved since then, but I back in 2004. Here's how I think about it. We actually had laws that were treating people based on their sexual orientation differently. So if you're a gay couple. You can't get married. We were basically saying that you are a second-class citizen under the law, not entitled to the same rights as a couple who are consenting adults in a loving relationship. You, therefore, when one of you is sick, 
when one, God forbid, passes away, will not have the same legal rights. We right. were saying literally you're a second class citizen under the law. And now you see the court that Donald Trump created. That it's insanity. Is open. You know, all of this is just chitter chatter. I, oh, I, it is absolute. It's it's absolute not nonsense talking points. And yeah. it's just like there's there's no there's no concrete anything there's no the undecided vision vote. there's no vision there's no i don't believe in the undecided voter that's all i'm saying i don't believe in it i don't believe no. it's true i don't believe any you idiot gotta remember don't... that the average iq is 100 so that means there are people with really IQs. though i don't think that that's even i don't even think that that's uh, have you been out in public lately i, I know i'm gonna say lower i'm saying lower <laughs> <laughs> that's not a, the average isn't 100 I, I, I no i don't think so because i'm a one i'm 140 and so I'm that means there's a 60 out there. Yeah, I'm 143, as a matter of absolute fact. I'm 140, as a matter of absolute fact. But I haven't had myself tested in a while. And I it's think okay. It's close. Enough. But there's definitely a 60 out there. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there is that. All right, I'm continuing. Talking about what else could be at risk. And understand, if Donald Trump were to get another term, most of the legal scholars think that there's going to be maybe even two more seats that'll be up. That means, think about it, not for the next four years, for the next 40 years, for the next four generations of your family, what might be a Supreme Court that is about restricting your rights versus expanding your rights. What do you think, too, of these uh, judges basically saying whatever? I'm waiting to see the picture of Beth and Howard with Kamala. Oh, absolutely. No, she came in for it, but you know he oh. didn't invite Robin in. Trump does oh. not <laughs> including assassinating his opponents because he's doing it for the good of the country. What the hell is going on here? You're, you're the prosecutor. You're the attorney general. What, what is going on here? Is this America? So to your point, that's where everyone I think is starting to understand this election is not 2016 or 2020 because that Supreme court decision just a few months ago, basically said to the former president, you will be immune from anything you do in office. Now, no, this is the guy who said he would weaponize the Department of Justice, take away the independence of the Department of Justice and put his loyal much. Somebody who has said literally he would use this word, he uses this word, he would terminate the Constitution in the United States. You know what the Constitution of the United States does? That's the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable search and seizure. That's the Fifth Amendment, which is your right to remain silent. That's the Sixth Amendment, your right to an attorney. And he's going to terminate the Constitution? Yeah. Let me ask you this. If he wins, God forbid, would you feel safe in this country? Would you stay in this country? Howard, I'm doing everything I can to make sure he does not win. Well, what if he does? How can you be safe? He's saying, oh, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want. This time I know what I need to do. You know what? All of those former officials from national security, the over 200 Republicans who worked with both Presidents Bush, Mitt Romney, John McCain, who are endorsing me, the former vice president, Dick Cheney, who was voting for me along with his daughter, Liz, Liz Cheney. Cheney. We are building a coalition of people that are Republicans, independents, Democrats, libertarians, all stripes of Americans who are coming together to say, you know what? This will my poor mom. She's like freaking out. I'm telling you, she's just constantly. She's she's a little inland, isn't she? She is, but she lives in a 55 and over community. Oh, and those people get all wacky. And, yeah, and they're they're they are doing a, a evacuation there. It's suggested. It's not mandatory, but you know, I'm moving her inland, and she's just freaking. She's just. I, I don't blame her, but. You know, she's called me like 20 times and she's driving me insane. Yeah, I mean, she can just go to a night, I mean, just put in a nice hotel and, you know. Oh, because there's any to be had. Dennis, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it's about putting country before party, that this is about saying. I offer to take her here, but. And abide by the oath okay, so I got to support I got and covered. defend the Constitution of the United States or someone who is full time engaged in flattery from Vladimir Putin of Russia and sending. COVID testing kits over to him when Americans are dying every day. It's, a, it's remarkable. By the way, you have said something I've been screaming about for years. I believe the United States Postal I believe you can tell a society by its post office. You go overseas, yeah. you can't get a letter. What? The post office here in the United States mm -hmm. 
is so fantastic. She doesn't even know where this is going. Things for granted. Good things are. You're right. We really are. And you have said, and I was thinking back to when Trump was president. Remember who he appointed to be in charge of the post yeah. office? And remember the chaos at the post yes. office? I couldn't get a letter. Yes. That's office. enough. Yeah. He's still in office. I don't know. Dumb, dumb. I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't get it. Post but office. here's the thing. Let's not throw up our hands. Let's roll up our sleeves. Because this Shouldn't is our, have to. What? This is our country. And you know what? If you love our country, we got to fight for our country. We can't take our country for granted. Wait a minute. Aren't you in office I right now? Our country. I love the American people. And what I see when I'm traveling all over our country is that people are coming together of all different backgrounds based on a common belief that if you love something, you got to fight set it for free. it. And, and that's. <laughs> You're going to let it yeah, set it free. Yep. This moment. And Sphinx because, said that. We can have our disagreements, but there's some foundational stuff that we got to agree on. And it includes... Philosopher of the uh, 1980s sting. Free and fair election. My uh, my iPad broke in the shower the other day. Just going to Walk. I don't even want to know why it's in the shower. You didn't like the outcome because you lost. Now, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. How crazy. How do you You vote? You need to get a TV put in there. If I win, it was a fair election. If I lose... Kamala Harris and her buddies fixed it. I, that's delusional. That that you can't have that, and you can certainly not storm the Capitol when you're the sitting president of the United States. In America, we call that a sore loser, and in this case, this is someone who has already lost, which would say that they are actually already a loser. And how do you vote for someone who says, um, "Find me eleven thousand votes"? What is that? It's on tape. Yeah. What is? I'm. I, it's so crazy. Uh, the, 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 when you ran for Senate, it was bittersweet, right? You won, yeah. which is great. But you said, I ate a whole bag of Doritos that night. That's your thing, Doritos? Oh, I love Doritos. Original nacho. But uh, let me just tell you, it was a family-sized bag. Wow. <laughs> I sat on the couch. But you're in good shape. Were you like I worked nausea? out every morning. Did you work out this morning? I did. Where did you work out? At, on the elliptical at the hotel. Oh, they bring one up to your room? Yeah. Nice. How long do you go on the elliptical? Half an hour to 45 minutes. You're not bored out of your skull on that thing? I'm watching a variety of things. That's how I catch Morning it. Joe? Um, so, yeah. He's sometimes. something, huh? Yeah. That morning Joe. Uh-huh. I love that guy. I do too. So this is the president, yeah. vice president of the United States. Yeah. You can't vote in his own party. You can spend country. hours really on an elliptical watching mindless TV. Most important. Just like Howard. Sure. Why are you oh, to can sit on a, his um, Peloton I and watch feel, mindless TV? Okay, for someone who's healthy and you have a good figure, why raisin bran? There's a lot I, of sugar. Well, no, so I don't eat raisin bran every morning. But okay. if you ask me what was my favorite cereal, I would put it right up there with, okay, and then this is going to be obnoxious and Special K. <laughs> special K is... Wow. Like, well, it's, it's really great. I'm going to make these Special K cookies in honor of me. Can you imagine... <laughs> Was alive yeah. and saw her water running <laughs> in the United States. I miss her every day. She was something, huh? Yeah, she was very special. All five feet of her. You would have loved her. If you met her, you would have thought she was six feet tall. When she worked in a chemical lab and mm-hmm. she worked on developing cures for breast cancer. Correct. You would go with her as a little girl yeah. and clean the test tubes. That was my first job, and I was awful. She fired me. <laughs> she fired because why? You would like those I just, things have to be. Because I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to clean pipettes. You know. Was it was it a weird time in your life? I, I think a couple of defining moments would be not only going to law school, but even going back in time. I hope this. You're is living in Oakland. Over an hour. And this is your this time, you bus black kids to the white school, and they put you on a bus and bus you there. What, what was. It was, was actually the Flatlands of Berkeley at the time, but yeah. But they did, did you see? Did you see? That were kids openly hostile to you? Because I imagine when we arrived at school. Yeah, I didn't have that experience. Um, How old is she? And large, you know. Let me tell you. Maybe oh, this 61. is one of the reasons why. Oh, she's um, not much older than us. We didn't grade. really have that type of nonsense around, around our age. Rest her soul. No. no. Attended no. law school graduate. No one cared by then. Wow. We were in New York. Wow. Yes. Mixed, you, know? you mean you actually had well, relationships? California. This yes. Oh, I that's had so relations. healthy. Uh, yes. And How did you know was, to do that? How did you well, know? It's, no, it's what she did. Oh, wait, she was in Canada for high so school. 
you know, it was, was like, I love teaching. Yeah, they said they would really move to Canada do. for a while. God's work. Oh, Think yeah. about it. I'm confused. Pay them nearly I'm enough. And what is their calling? To teach other people's children. Right? So when you ask me what was that like, what was the environment like, I think it was all of those incredible teachers who they set an example and they created an environment that was welcoming and nurturing. And, you know, I mean, I'm very blessed to have been raised and, and people I talk to who have achieved any level of success. One of the things that I've found to be a theme is that at some point we were each told, be it by a teacher or somebody at your church or your synagogue or Willie Brown, we were, but we were told at some point that we were special. And <laughs> but somebody told us that and we believed them. <laughs> right. Otherwise you'd right? be a wreck. Right. And and that's part of, you know, Shrinking. I, I had the blessing of, you know, in my childhood. Wait, I just have a question for everybody because Mrs. Beaverhausen um, mentioned it. Should we have a little interlude? I want to feel the sun, have barbecues. I want to see my friends. The old and new will turn on the game and share some laughs and we'll play this and that. And I'll say goodbye to rainy days, to the colder nights and the empty trees. And I fall alive in colors new and it's all here for you to see cloudless skies. Uh, Especially in those really uh, critical stages of development, to have a teacher like Mrs. Wilson uh, and Mrs. in an Wilson. environment that really told oh, Dennis's all mom, right? Do right. anything. Do you? I, I'm wondering about this. You must admit, it, with all this pressure on you right now, and like you've got to win. You know, you just shows, have to. Right? I it's really just, believe. Oh, I, I, really and my daughter's awesome. not in school this week, so I'm like on vacation. The sun's literally going to go out. This is how I feel. Mm-hmm. And I and, and and God bless you. Uh, so I'm really ooh. afraid that people, good Maybe people, bright people, today, are discouraged from going into public. That would be now. that would be, be wonderful. Oh my God, that would be heaven. I don't want to be told that you know I, I'm for science and I'm an idiot. Yeah. You know, I you know it's the whole thing is crazy. With all the pressure on you, is there like you can't go to a therapist, can you, and say? Yeah, I want to. I want to unload a little bit this here. This is wanna, my form of therapy right now. With Howard. me, <laughs> I they. No, but 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 seriously. Yeah. Because can't, there's still that me. one taboo in politics. If you go to a therapist, yeah. you're weak and you're probably insane. And to me, going to a therapist means you're sane, like you're trying to work on yourself. I only wish Donald would go. Yeah. You know, he, I don't know how easily you cure that narcissism at this point. Yeah. But but can you could you go and talk to someone like a therapist and, and and get therapy? Well, let me just tell you, I have I have the great fortune of having a really incredible group of friends. My best friend from kindergarten is still one of my best friends. Really? Yeah. Um, I have an incredible husband, and so I do have people in my life that I can talk to. And one of the things I I advise others is. You know, especially younger people. I mentor a lot of people, men and women. Um, what do you mean by that? When you mentor someone, like a young kid comes to you and says, "Gee, I, I I'm Amazon. thinking of going to law school. Yeah. Or I'm lost." Or yeah, well, Amazon just people I meet along the way who it will express to me some goal or some desire they have, and I'll just make sure that I follow up with them. And one of the things I say, in, and I believe, is that we each. Should rem- we should be conscious of the fact that there are certain choices we can make. And one of them is about who we choose to be in our life, in our inner circle. And so choose to have people in your life, in that inner circle, who are supportive of you and who will encourage you. You know, people who, when you trip, will laugh with you when you trip, but then pick you back up and push you back out. Why do we attract so many people who aren't like that? And why are we attracted to them? I do that all the time. I go, what am I doing with this person? You have to be conscious of it. You have to be conscious of it, It, you know, to be very rudimentary. Like, choose not to have mean people in your life. Yeah. Mean people. It seems like the country. Mean people suck. I saw a stick. Well, I think that that we just, we should remember the good. Nice and I don't mean to sound over. naive, but we have to remember the good. We have so many hardworking, good people who I have the 
great experience of meeting every day. I'm, for example, one of my passions is small businesses. So right. my mother worked full time. She worked long hours and we lived on a nursery school above a, a child care center. And the woman who owned that, Mrs. Shelton, was our, we called her our second mother. She helped my mother raise us. She was a small business owner. I grew up as a child knowing small business owners. They are leaders in the community. They hire locally. They mentor. So I have a real passion for small businesses. Wherever I go around the country, I try to visit small businesses. I'm telling you, Howard, around our country, all these people who are innovative, ambitious, they are optimistic. They are building. They are creating. They are obviously contributing to our economy. Like we have... This is the spirit of the American people. And we things are, are good. ambitious yeah. and we are aspirational. I mean, you guys introduced that infrastructure bill. Yeah. And I mean, there are Almost people building, minutes. you know, the, uh, the economy is is doing very minutes. well. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. The, c- c- prices in every presidential election have been way too high. There's never been an election where we said prices. We need to work on bringing need- prices down. I mean, part of my point is we need to go after price gouging. Right. I've done that before. You know, we got to go after the bad actors where they exist, especially. Are you vice president right now? I, I just got to bring up some sets of facts. Storms and these hurricanes. I've seen it. But to be to be fair, what the fuck do vice presidents do? I mean, really, what go do they funerals, do? Go to funerals. And stay, do you remember stay, anything? Stay that, I I barely remember. Unless you're, Dick Cheney, unless you're Dick Cheney, then unless you start Cheney. a war. Then, then you that's... start a war because then, you're Dick Cheney. Because well, you had a stupid man for, for president. Well, I mean, Dick Cheney needed a pretty face to become, you know, I mean, just yes. Dick Cheney. I mean, would yes. you vote for Dick Cheney? He's got the he's underlord. Yes, 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 yes. He's got All the in California where, you know, when people are desperate in an emergency, some bad actors will jack up prices. We need to go after them. and st- you know. I know people who tried to get out of Florida and the, the fair to come to New York went up to $1,500. But then again, that's also supply and demand. That's, that's, that is that's supply oh, no and demand. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, there's only I so mean, many seats on a plane. And and hotels were like at 650 700 I mean, you know, they only like, have so many rooms. All along the corridor, the, I, the I-95 corridor was like. On, on the East Coast? On the East Coast, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Come oh, in. yeah, the I-95. Yeah, just just for people? yeah, there was a guy selling uh, the other day $100,000 watches. Um, yeah, from, it's from just, China. It's, well, they're going to, you know, in moments of crisis, the predators will come out. Yeah. And you got to go after them. Do, um, speaking of your husband. Yes. Was it hard for you because you were so successful at an early age, you know, being a prosecutor, the DA, attorney general, all, all he of these jobs. He was a very jobs, successful lawyer. What's he going to say? Um, was it hard for you to make a love connection, to make a romance with Doug? Because no, Willie Brown was pretty men right in town. Would be intimidated by <laughs> My husband, Doug, is one of the (laughs) strongest, uh, most self-actualized people, men I've known. You loved him right away? People, men. Was it a slow build? I did. So let me tell you about Doug. Doug grew up in Jersey. Oh. Um, What exit? He worked for everything he had. Down the shore? We have a... (laughs) He was employee of the month at McDonald's. And you were at McDonald's. I worked at McDonald's. Well, you can't leave here because I have questions about McDonald's. Okay, I'll answer anything you have. All right, but, good, so, yeah. but he worked for They're everything. They're trying to wrap it up. And he has the best sense of humor. He's he's very, I don't want to say simple, but he's he's really clear. He cares about family. He cares about working hard. He he Was he a lawyer? He, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he was somebody. a lawyer. He started his own law firm. Is that how you met? Because he would like, how do you meet him? So we met on a blind date. My oh. best friend set us up. That's how we met. Brown? And it turned out that we have friends in common that we separately knew. And then it all connected. Have you ever set anybody up on a blind date? Yes, I, I am. That's part, of, that's part of the charm. Maybe <laughs> even more know, there's, yeah. It's kind of like roulette, right? Like yeah. it might hit, it may not. So and, the other. Um, but look, I think that. Mrs. Chair people, needs to come home and get a drill no, bit and a I mean, drill. I'm, I'm scared. I met at various things and people will come up to me. I know you met your husband on a blind date. You got anybody for me? <laughs> well, you know, uh, what he described was he was very nervous around you, left a rambling voicemail. Yes, he did. And he was sure that you thought he was a douche and that uh, you were never going to see him again. And yet you uh, you hooked up. That was it. He is, um, I feel very fortunate to have a husband who is um, so he's just secure in his skin. He's not trying to be anything he's not. And um, 
a cuck. You know, he's an incredible father. He sounds like a cuck. Yeah, he's just, he's an incredible you, son you to, to my in laws. Uh, right. He's just good people. Do you think no, you there don't. You don't have to be a cuck, but he's a cuck. Because, 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 because she's a woman. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I you have think, to, you have to, I think you're up against Bill's not a cuck. Bill Clinton's not a cuck. I wouldn't call him a cuck at all. But, but, and radio man have been collaborating with women. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to when I made my movie, I had a female director, and, mm-hmm. I, and when, when I worked I at the E movie. Network, I had this woman, Franche, who was. Oh, so wait, 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 what, what decade was that? With an energy, and I believe that women, I've said this on the air a million times, mm-hmm. women have to work harder to get respect. So they actually go, like in show business, they actually have to go to film school and then intern and then work their way up to become a director. Mm-hmm. Guys can bullshit their way through it and, and get away with a lot. And I don't understand this philosophy especially guys who have daughters and sisters and mothers. What is the bias? I mean, what, what, what is it? They think oh, a woman you have three daughters and you're throwing baloney at strippers' asses. I don't know, you uh, don't know okay. what you say to those people. <laughs> Wait a minute. I never threw baloney at strippers' asses. position I've had. Yeah. So, although you would have liked to, to be honest. I believe that no, I don't get off on men and women support women in leadership. And that's been Maybe my life. Uh, like spanking of some sort, but, you know, <laughs> when you made that call, well, first of all, when you got the call from Joe Biden, oh, Dana yeah. Plato, said, I want you to <laughs> mm-hmm. right. were you floored? Were you expecting it? I didn't know that I was going to get it. Um, Thank God I only had one drink. I, too. I no, I've just obviously right I put myself drink. out as as being open to it. And right. it's, a big, it's, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big thing. And he reached it's our out first Patreon. This guy, Tim yes. Walls, I don't know how you, I want, I'm really, maybe one day you'll write about this, like picking a vice president. Yeah. I mean, here you we are. You make enough to even pay for my drink. <laughs> and, you know, in an unusual circumstance mm-hmm. where Joe Biden just said, okay, I hear you. I hear you. What a, I mean, I, I had him on my show. Yeah, what a was, loving man. Yeah, he's such a good person. He's so good in my country. That must have been the hardest hey, Mo- Monique, look up. the denomination. History is going to show it was probably what one of the, gonna ride the, Sibian? the one soon, of the soon. rarest moments of <laughs> Do, with courage. With the, the deepest Wait, here's something Howard would, would like to know about. I can't believe how we much when, she's uh, giving when him. He, when, when, when is he going to ask her how girthy <laughs> Willie Brown was? <laughs> I'm at home. It's a Sunday afternoon in my workout clothes. My niece her husband and their two daughters were staying with us and i made pancakes that morning they were actually ax- asking for like extra prince food. after the I basketball the game you love to cook I love to cook <laughs> and then we had this puzzle we were working on and so we went to go work on the puzzle jigsaw puzzle yeah you're into no, that. No, no, yeah. it was. It was <laughs> kids it's so fun no type of other it's puzzle could it be you moron the exactly. phone rings and it's joe and um and so I got up to take the call and um and then life changed. Wow. Yeah. What a call. How long did you talk? We talked a couple of times that day and that morning. I'd say probably for like half an hour. You know, I mean the first thing I asked him to be honest with you is, Are you sure? You know? I felt bad for him because you know what? He did a damn good job. Yeah, he did. He and, took over and in he's chaos. still doing a great job. Yeah. He's not done. He's I not know. done. I know. A terrific. Where is he? And this Tim Walls, I think he's fantastic. When you were at the uh, Democratic Convention, and mm-hmm. he gets up with this energy. Yeah. Who, who tells you to, I guess it's a whole think tank, right? When you're, did Obama advise you on your pick for vice president? No. I, I made the decision. I made the decision, but. How often did you meet with him to, before you decide? Well, I had worked with him because, you know, he's also president of the, of the Governor's Association. So we had been working together. And, um, and then I obviously met with him to talk with him about considering him for, for my running mate. And let me just start with saying that there were a lot of incredible candidates. And ultimately, my decision really was just my gut decision because none of the candidates lack for an incredible level of talent and experience. But the thing about Tim Walls is, you know, people would look at the two of us and think, what could they possibly have in common? He grew up on one side of the country in a rural environment. I grew up on another side of the country in a very urban environment. 
you know, we just look different. We look like we'd be very different. Right. We have so much in common. Because he's a public servant. But also, here's the thing, Howard. Yeah. He reminds me of the people I grew up with. Different part of the country, maybe a different race, but hardworking people, straight talking, grounded in principles. Great governor. Yeah, but just good people. Yeah, like, people like, she like, grew up over great governors. People. And I, what, and I, mean, I he's just trying to throw shit in there. It's hilarious. About <laughs> him. When Trump was president, I would lay awake at night worrying about the presidency, and I would no, see people in his cabinet leaving and coming no, and going. It was like mass chaos. People were like resigning every minute. I believe if you become president, I think you just said too, you're going to put a Republican in your yes. uh, in your cabinet. Correct. I love that. Yeah. That's old school. Look, listen, I know, and I've I've been a decision maker long enough to know that the best decisions I make are when I bring in a variety of perspectives that allow me to consider every angle and to to build consensus. That's the best way as a leader, I believe, you make good decisions. And, and um, yeah, I, I think so too. And I, and I think as um, <laughs> you know, you think about the people that you're going to have in oh your Oh my camp, God, wrap it up! Think, I'm guessing. Fuck's sake, stop. Will you appoint? Am I correct? Shh, I, I got to win, Howard. I got to win. You got to win. I got to win. You got to win. And listen, but the thing about Liz Cheney, let me just say, she's remarkable. She's smart. She is a dedicated public servant. She has shown extraordinary courage Absolutely. in this moment where there's such she's violent in her own state. language. I mean, you know, yeah, lots of things going on there. Um, country before. Party and you know Her she fathers and the Antichrist. No. But the fundamentals they do agree on. But I mean, so many get, things. I believe in democracy in and the people's one? right to vote. Yes, yeah, yeah. is so is hunting buddy. That's Oops, that's the decision. And and she yeah. said, I don't care about particular issues yeah. right now. I need like bombing country. foreign countries for no reason. Need, it's good stuff. The United States it's of America. Family bonding for them. Out here, <laughs> it's going to be a darkness all over the world. NATO, no NATO. But to your point, I've now met as vice president over 150 world leaders, presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. And part of what keeps me up at night is the knowledge based on experience. America is so important to the rest of the world, Howard. Yeah, absolutely. We are so important to the rest of the world. Yeah. We are a role model for what it means to be a democracy. So we can look at other countries and our allies and our adversaries and say, these are the principles that must be upheld. And while we uphold these principles, we will also be the strongest economy in the world. We will have the most lethal fighting force in the world. All these things coexist. But you got to have a president who appreciates and understands that. On the issue of the military, we already discussed where Donald Trump is. He belittles the members of our military. And who's more important than our military? I mean, but, you but know. right, you look at the economy. My plans for the economy, listen, I am a capitalist. I'm also a, a I am also a you devout are. public servant that knows government can't do everything by itself. Yeah. My my econ policies, Goldman Sachs, the 16 Nobel laureates will tell you okay, that my okay. plans would strengthen it? our economy. Donald Trump's plans would weaken our economy, would inflate inflation. And would bring a recession on by the middle of next year. What are these guys up to with mispronouncing your name? They, they act as if they can't say Kamala. It's not yeah. that complicated. It's just, what it, What's going on? What what what's really going is on? going on there? When I don't know. I, what is going Kamala? on? I'm confused. Is it supposed to be an insult? Is it like Barack Hussein? Obama? Is it some sort of It's the same slur? old tired playbook, Howard. It's, and, it, and I think most people are not going to be distracted by it. They want to know you have a plan for bringing prices down. Right. They want to know you have a plan for keeping America. You're in office now. Work. What is it? Right, right. So, so uh, I would sum up your plan. The I love the $6,000 tax credit uh, for those yeah. with newborns. Yeah. Well, and can. this is a real boom to people. Hate children. This is stuff that would be, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a new grandfather. To, oh, I, I, didn't two, know I, have, that. I have two grandchildren, but I have a, 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 a new one, a new one, uh-huh. brand new. Good for you. Congratulations. And, and you know, a $6,000 tax credit is saying you're pro family. And, and what does it do? It allows a young person, Young Wait, what does it do? To buy a crib, it's a, a tax car. credit. So basically, if you don't pay any taxes, you don't get so the credit because you didn't that. pay the taxes. That's the way it works. Development. 
You have to and pay six thousand dollars in taxes to the credit, if I remember family. correctly. Yes. Whole and family is about taking care of, ch like I announced today. Wow. What my plan to make sure that Medicare covers at home elder care because probably a lot of your listeners are in that sandwich generation. Oh my God. <laughs> they for young kids and their elder parents. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to tell you how old I am. A lot of, I mean, a lot of your listeners, yes, uh, they're I, elder. I have an old mother, 97 mm -hmm. years old. The cost is people don't know this yet. If they're not taking care of somebody elderly, it will bankrupt you. Absolutely. Will right. you, you or got, your yep. parent will not get the care they need, or you're going to have to leave your job. Right. Which means you're going to reduce your income to, depending on what it is, almost nothing in terms of your household income to do what you want to do, which is to give your parent the dignity they deserve with care. And can you imagine if Medicare is uh, impacted? Or, or oh Obama my God, care wrap for it that up matter. And I mean, look at what thinking. Donald Trump has been talking about for years. And look at his project 2025. People should Google it. I mean, what okay. they're doing and what he's talking about in terms of attacking Social Security, Medicare, undoing the Affordable Care Act, and which means the insurance companies can come back and deny people with pre existing conditions. Wrap All of this is very cool and on. very much at stake in this election. Yeah, I mean, I really do. I, I, I hear what you're saying. And you know what even was weird to me? And I'll, I'll end on a high note here or oh, a low note. God. So Taylor Swift endorsed you. Great. Okay. I don't know if it moves the needle or not, but you need everyone to come into the tent and be part of the party. To say I hate Taylor Swift because she disagrees with your politics. He's done Wait a this. minute. You said you hated all people that voted for Trump. At the Republican convention. I said, Donald, I'm going to very upset with me. And he said, no, 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 Jesus, no, no. Jesus, self-aware much? Uh, and then he hated me. You know, when I was a bad guy, no longer had ratings. I wasn't funny. I was, I, you know, I got all the, all the, all that's, the that's work. true. Okay. How can, how can we have that kind of mentality? I mean, because she disagrees with his politics, so, he hates her. I think Donald Trump is an unserious man. And the consequences of him being president again are brutally serious. Yeah, they really are. Bruce Springsteen, did you watch his endorsement of you? I did. It's I was fantastic. very touched. I was very touched. I'm a huge fan. And, yeah. and obviously, Doug is a huge fan from Jersey. So when you were in college, this all in Oh, my that. God. Wrap it I up. have to understand this. Fuck. So you worked with Senator Cranston. Yes. I remember Senator Alan Cranston. You do? Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah sure. Yeah. He was, um, an early, he was one of the early environmentalists. Yeah. Do you remember Allard Lowenstein, too? And all those. You know, He's maybe, just reading you know, names that Jan oh, Hine found. But anyway, but you're working at. A senator's office and you're working at mcdonald's at the same time no well i was worked at mcdonald's the year before the oh summer you did before oh yeah. okay i thought because yeah. i was like well that is a real like you go to work during the day for cranston and then you're at mcdonald's was Not mcdonald's fun at all or is it really hard work is it just a drag you know i mean i it was it's an experience right i mean i <laughs> I, I was doing the fries and you got to watch the timer and it's it's hard work but honestly howard i will say in all seriousness the point about mcdonald's for me is also you know i was a college kid and it was spending money right right there were people who were working there who, that was the source of their family's income that's right right yep. and and that's the thing that I think that's my takeaway about that experience as much as anything, which is we still got a lot of work to do to make sure that folks cannot just get by, but get ahead. And that's why I'm so committed on what I call an opportunity economy. I think you'd be a great president. <clears throat> I think you're compassionate. I think you've had all the life experience. I love your experience as a prosecutor. And, 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 uh, and I, I, I want to thank you because I know I'm getting the high sign. Uh, I want to thank you for, um, all the years of public service. I appreciate okay. anyone who really serves the public and serves them in a, in a way. And I know even as a prosecutor, you got people out of jail who were falsely accused. Oh yeah. And that to me says something. Yeah. And, uh, I, 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 I love you as vice president of the United I can States. Hear his dry mouth. And I, I just, it's driving me crazy. It's cl I hear clicking. Think similarly to I me. I hear clicking. It's driving me nuts. I don't agree with I me. Do too. not vote. I encourage people not to vote who are thinking in a direction of uh, endorsing Vladimir Putin and all that stuff. I hope people get out and vote. I hope we wake up. He's going to thank you for the nightmare. check. And hopefully they clear. And, I, and, um, and uh, go to IWillVote.com and register to vote for Kamala Harris. 
And um, I'm, I'm very, uh, my mother's beside herself that you're here with me. No, Melody, Howard's Ray. getting paid for Ray. It. Ray. Ray. She Hi, goes, oh, Ray. My son, my son, my son. Oh, Jesus Christ. Interview the vice president of the oh, United the States. Stop. Hi, Ray. Yeah, I said, Mom, just calm down. She's on so much morphine, she won't even remember I did this. But uh, she'll be all right. Oh, Listen, God. this is fantastic. God. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I wish you the best. Thank I know there's a the lot time. of pressure on you. I hope uh, this was fun for you. And I'm sure you're. I'm honored. I'm this. honored to be on your show, Howard Stern. How did the uh, How did the um, view go? Was that fun? It went well. It went well. Whoopi there, behaved. Whoopi behaved, yeah, and yeah. Um, there was some. You know, we had covered some serious topics, some fun topics. So there yeah. was. There were two kids in the audience who during. Oh my the great god! Show, they were playing hooky. Wow. And so I wrote them basically hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, great stuff. There you go. Well, listen. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. And uh, and thank you for everything. That's, I appreciate it's, it's you. Very thank cool you for the for you time. To be here. Thank okay. you for the time. Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States, who actually went to see you two at the Sphere. Was that yes. any good, by oh. the way? Oh my God, have you been to the Sphere? I, I'm I'm troubled by it. I'm, I don't. I, well, let me just say, basically, never did. Um, everyone should go in with a a, a clear head. <laughs> That's, Isn't that, it true? That was a challenge. That's why I'm saying that. Yeah. <laughs> like definitely go in. You mean and don't be high. Correct. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like it, because we, it's a lot. Like there's a lot of visual stimulation. Yeah. And then I love you too. It, actually, it was a it was a surprise for Doug. Because we have been working and working and working. And he and I both that this is the other one we have in common is you two. And so it was my surprise. He thought we were leaving Nevada from campaigning and heading back to DC. And then we drove up the street to the sphere wow. and, and the band actually came and said hello. But it's it's extraordinary. You're sitting there and it's almost like Disneyland or Disney World where things just start to change around you. Wow. And you feel like you lose a sense I of can't gravity. He makes her linger here. Because of the it's really phenomenal. These are two very vapid people that just, it. And it's, that just it's enjoy it. About mics and all this stuff. Doesn't she have something she important really to do? I mean, seriously. Parts. I mean, really, seriously. Because Props are all out in, the, in the, right the sphere now. on the on the monitors. Right. Please have something. You have to have something more important really? than this. It's really Please, God. God. incredible work of of just technology. Yeah. And you collect vinyl. Ah! Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, but I collect it for our son Cole too because Inca! he to everything. And so when I, I try to, so my small business tour. So I try to go wherever I am. Also, if there's a record store, right, and then I'll pick up vinyl for him and bring it back for him. Well, that's a, that's just, um, and and just answer this quickly. Yeah. Why do you like Formula One? These guys driving around the cars over and over again oh, in a circle. Oh, so good. You, lo you really love that. We love it. Our whole family it's, does. It's not a campaign and depending thing. On, no, God, no, wow. no. Well, it, actually, I haven't been able to watch it a lot recently because I am campaigning. Because, you know, also depending on where they're driving, the time of day, you know, you got to wake up like Who is your favorite a, driver? Lewis Hamilton, of course. What? I don't even well, know who that is. Fucking safe ah, answer. The 80s. You no. don't know. You don't watch Formula One. No. no? I mean, I, oh, it's you, once you start. I think you should see it. You might get hooked. Wow. Yeah, it's you don't stuff. play golf. Do I you? love Formula One. No, Doug good. does. I do too. I, I don't miss every race near the White House. <laughs> too much golf. I see in uh, the, Austin, uh, Texas, this weekend. Nine. They run off to uh, what? What is that? That that secret hideaway that Eisenhower built. Um, what's it I called? don't know because it's secret. Yeah, what do, is do you it, know Howard? what I'm talking about? Camp David. <laughs> oh, yeah, Camp David. David. Well, a historic yeah. site, by the way. You know, you go there? Donald Trump invited the Taliban there. So, yeah, let's, wow. let, let's put that on that ledger. My father said if the Americans ever saw Camp Wrap David, there'd up. be a revolt in the country. That it's, he goes, I've father, never been. You've never been. No. God bless you. Yeah. You should be president. If you never go to Camp David, that'd that's be because amazing. the president only goes to Camp David. Okay. Being told you have to go. Okay. I love this I'm, conversation. I'm, I Thank hope you to come so back. much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. No, you don't. You don't have to come back at all. It's okay. Right. Sorry, it's great. All right, thanks. That's Howard one one Howard. What? Oh, that's the end. Howard one hundred. Progressive knows finding your new. Holy shit! That's the way it ended. I'm curious. Wow! Wow! Damn. Hmm. That was horrible. Well, horrible. just I'm curious. Horrible. All right. Well, there you go, guys. There's your uh there's your there it is.
there it is. There, there's your PSA here. Here's here. what I learned. I he, I learned that when you do a Patreon, you have to then immediately remove it from YouTube, or else they'll come after you for like you know, yes, doing bad stuff. All right, guys. Uh, thank you everybody who came in and out. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for um being a part of our Patreon. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Thanks. hope everything works out. It'll be fine. No, well, for it'll you, be fine. Fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm team. I I'm got, team Indian bur burial ground because uh, they they have a thing no. protecting Tampa. Agreed. I'm All team right. Redskin man. <laughs> Guys, I'm uh, I'm happy that you came and joined us for this. I know it's a slow build, but we'll do. It's a very slow build. Us. We're gonna watch the Penguin. I think next week we're gonna yes! do um, private parts. We're gonna do some silly stuff, and uh, and that's it. And we love you guys, and we'll see you in on. So good. Thanks for hanging with us tonight. Please join us for any discussion at radiogunk.com in the forum section. Follow us on Instagram or Twitter at Radio Gunk. And don't forget to like this and subscribe to us and hit that little bell so that you know when we're going to have a new show. Thanks.